In this video, we're going to start taking a look at some of our 3D sketching tools available to us inside of the 3D sketch environment of our part files. So what I've done is I've started a brand new part file. It doesn't matter if you choose inches or millimeters. This is a millimeter template I started with here. And I'm going to begin a new 3D sketch. Now, as a reminder, where we find the 3D sketch command is actually as a flyout to our 2D sketch command. So if I go up to my sketch panel in the upper left and choose the flyout, I can select Start 3D Sketch. This takes me into our 3D sketch environment. Here I have the 3D sketch contextual tab up top. And we're going to begin by looking at some of our drawing tools inside of this particular environment. If I start with a traditional line command, what I'll see is a UCS triad will appear, as well as a little precise input toolbar. Now, if this precise input toolbar that you see where my cursor is currently, right here, if that does not appear for you when you're using the 3D sketching tools, what you need to do is turn it on. And you can do that by going up to your draw panel, expanding that down, and turning on precise input. Now, with precise input toggled on, it allows me to specify X, Y, and Z location as I'm drawing my line or any other tool that I'm using inside this environment that requires input of coordinates. The input of coordinates that I can perform with this toolbar can also be relative or absolute to Cartesian space. I can also reposition the triad if I had geometry to attach to, as well as resetting it back to the origin point. So those are all options I have available to me by using the 3D sketch environment with this precise input toolbar. Now to begin with, I like to start at my 0, 0, 0 point. This UCS triad I see in the middle of the screen happens to be right on that origin right now. Now I could go in here and simply click on that origin ball, and that will get me to my origin there for drawing a line. But it's actually a little bit easier to go here to my X, Y, and Z. It's a little bit more methodical, call me old fashioned, I suppose. But I'm going to type in 0. In order to get to the next box, you simply hit tab, and we do zero there, tab again, and zero there. Now when I hit enter, that'll put a line starting at zero, 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 and then I need to tell it where I want to go. So let's say I would like to change in my x, y, and z direction. In the x direction, I would like to go, let's say, three millimeters. So I'll choose three. In the y direction, I'll go 20. And in the Z direction, or the blue direction in this case, I'm going to go 5. So once I have those inputted in my box, I'll choose Enter. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And currently, my UCS is set to be relative to the last point I had chosen. So my next input after this will be relative to the point I just got to. So relative to this new point, I'm going to change in the X by negative 6. And in the Y, I'll go by 15. In the Z, I'm going to go in the negative direction as well. I'm going to go negative 10 that direction. I'll hit Enter. And there's my new second point for my line there. Now notice I did two segments. It did not put an auto bend in my line. That's something we can turn on in our application options so that when we have these two segments, it automatically adds a fillet or a bend between those two. You can actually turn that on inside this environment as well. Simply right click and turn on the auto bend functionality. Let me scroll up here a little bit. And for my next point, with auto bend turned on, I'm going to go in the x direction by 15, y direction by 5, and z 5. I'll hit enter, and there you can see it has a d0 and the value put in there was a quarter inch for this one. I'm going to right click and choose escape to stop using this command and just kind of take a look at what was done. Now if I'd like to change that radius on that bend, I can simply double click on it like I would any other dimension. Currently you can see it's 0.25 inch, so I'm going to change this to be something else like maybe 0.125. Now notice it went over to millimeters because I didn't put the unit behind it. But I'm going to do 0.125 inches to adjust that size. 
if I would like to add a manual bend to these two segments down here, I'll simply go up and choose the bend command from my draw panel, or you can right click and choose bend from your marking menu. So here I'll choose this segment and this segment. Notice it's already set to 0.25 because that was my default radius for this particular document. I'm going to choose OK there. If I would like to make it equal to that one, I can double click this and say D1 equals D0, or you can type in the value as well. Now, since these are made equal parametrically, I can change one and affect the other. So I'll change that back to 0.25 inches, and the other one also updates. Now, of course, we're doing this in a very simplistic manner. We're drawing a new 3D sketch, we're drawing some lines, putting some bends in there. More traditionally, where you're going to run into 3D sketches, especially something like this, is maybe where you're routing through an assembly to different areas to try to get a pipe route created or some sort of cabling routed through somewhere. But in general, these are some of the simplistic tools that you're going to run into on how to use the line command and these bend tools. Now, some of the other commands we have up here, we also have an arc command and a spline command. Those operate in very similar ways that you would find inside the 2D sketch world, but now they're 3D. And you can use that precise input command to help you create those as well. The helical curve is something that you've never seen inside the sketch mode before. However, personally, I don't use it a lot. The helical curve is something that I feel I can do with a sweep or a coil command inside the part modeling environment just as well. However, some people like to do it the other way through sketching and then sweeping. So just to show you what helical curve is about, I'll start the command. Again, you can see I have precise toolbar with this as well. And I can define my helical shape in different ways. So I can do it by pitch and revolution, revolution and height, pitch and height, as well as doing a spiral. If this looks like the coil command to you, then you're in the right ballpark because it really does look almost exactly like the coil command, but without creating the 3D actual geometry. Here it's going to create just the 3D sketch element that would represent the coil shape in general. So by all means, you could choose one of these different options. You could adjust your settings as you see fit. You can even go to the helix ends and adjust those as well. Again, this looks almost identical to the coil command, except you're doing it as a sketch. And you want to simply start placing it somewhere. So maybe I'll put it at the end of this line segment I had there. And I had to tell it where I want this to be. Now notice how it's kind of all over the place. If you are going to use the helical curve command, it's not a bad idea to have some work geometry already created that you can attach to in order to really utilize the creation of this command. Otherwise, you will go through and do quite a bit of X, Y, and Z work in this precise input toolbar to get your helical curve just right. Personally, I don't use this command a whole lot, again, because I like the modeling tool a whole lot better.